The Composition API combines all of a component's data and functionality. Instead of having separate options, like data or computed, they're now bundled into a single setup method. The setup method takes two optional arguments, props and context, which we'll discuss in more detail in a little bit. To access setup data in the template, we have to return it in an object. When a key has the same name as its value, we can use ES6 shorthand syntax. Something to keep in mind is that the data we return isn't automatically reactive like it is in the data option. We have to make it reactive ourselves by using reactive refs. Another point to note is that view runs the setup method before the component is even created, which means before any of the lifecycle hooks are called. Because it's so early in the component's lifecycle, the component hasn't been initialized yet and this doesn't reference the config object like we expect. So in other words, we don't use this in the setup option. Earlier we mentioned that we need to use refs if we want our data to be reactive. Ref is a method from the view package that takes the data we want to make reactive as an argument. To access a ref's value, we use the value property. As an example, we'll create a simple greeting message. Then we'll use a timer to change it after 3 seconds. And then we'll render it out to the template. If we take a look in the browser, we'll see the greeting render, then change after 3 seconds. A ref doesn't have to be a primitive value though, we can use objects too. When we access the value, we use the objects key. If we run the example in the browser, we'll see the message render and then change like we expect. It's important to note that if we return the object's properties individually, they lose their reactivity. We have to expose the whole object, not just the separate properties. Another way to make data reactive is with the reactive method. It's like ref, but it can only accept objects, not primitives. One benefit of reactive is that we don't need to use the value property to access the object's value. The downside is that ref uses the value property for reassignment. Reactive doesn't, and therefore, can't be reassigned. We know that in the options API, we define custom functions in the methods option. With the composition API, we define functions directly in setup, and they can be regular, anonymous, or arrow functions. As an example, let's create the functions and have them change a ref on their respective button clicks. If we run the example in the browser, the greeting changes each time we click one of the buttons. In the Options API, we define computed properties in an option called Computed. With the Composition API, we define computed properties with the computed function. It's imported from the view package and takes a callback as its argument, where we define the logic. As an example, let's take a first and last name from two inputs in the template. Then we'll combine them in the computed function and render that to the template. If we run the example in the browser and add a name, it renders on the page like we expect. This example is actually a two-in-one because it also covers DOM event handling. In fact, event handling works exactly the same as it did before. For example, we use the event instance variable with the target property to access the value from the input. Input binding with vModel also works the same as before. The only difference is that we use a ref instead of a data property. If we head over to the browser and add a name, it shows in the greeting like we expect. In the options API, we define watchers in an option called watch. With the Composition API, we define watchers with the watch function. The function is imported from the view package and takes two arguments. The first is the data we want to watch. The second is a callback with the new and old value arguments that we can use to do the watching. 
To demonstrate, we have an example that takes a message from an input with vmodel. Let's watch the message for any changes and log the values to the console. If we run the example in the browser, it updates in the template as well as the console. Like with the watch option, if we want to run the watcher on the initial value, we can specify immediate as an optional third argument and set it to true. To watch multiple data sources, we use an array. This means that the old and new values also become arrays. If the ref is an object instead of a primitive, we have to use a getter callback function to access the value. The watch effect function works the same as watch, except for two things. It runs on the initial value immediately and automatically tracks dependencies in its body. It's imported from the view package and takes a callback as its only argument. The value must be used in the callback in some way for view to be able to track it. As an example, let's take a message from an input in the template and log it to the console in the watch effect function. If we run the example in the browser, it updates in the template as well as the console. With the options API, we define props when we invoke a component in its parent's template block. In the child component, we capture the props in the props option of the config object. We can then use them in the child component, either in the template with data binding or in something like a computed property. When we use them in a computed property, we access the prop with the this keyword. But as mentioned earlier, we can't use this in setup. At the start of the lesson, we mentioned the setup function has two optional parameters, one of which is a props object. Instead of this, we use the object to access props with dot notation. To demonstrate, we've created a new component called greeting message. We'll use it as a child to the root app component. The root app component takes a name from two inputs in the template and passes them to the greeting message component. The greeting message component takes the two name props and combines them into a full name with a computed property. If we enter a name in the browser, the combined name from the computed property will show. With the options API, we define custom events in the emits option of a child component, then send it to a parent component with the emit instance function. The parent listens to the event with event binding on the child component. We can then specify some sort of functionality to be executed when the event's captured, like changing a data property. In the Composition API, we use the second of the two optional parameters in the setup option, context. The parameter is an object with three different properties, adders, slots, and the emit function. Emit works the same as the special dollar sign emit instance function, except we can't use it in the template block. We have to wrap it in a function in setup. To demonstrate, we've created a new component called main menu that sends a close menu event on the click of a button. In the root app component, we listen for the event and change a ref when it fires. The ref is used to determine if the component's shown or not. If we run the example in the browser and click the button, the event gets sent up to the root app component and the menu opens. With the options API, we specify data we want to provide to another component in the provide option. Once the data has been provided, we can inject it in the component where we want to use it, with the inject option. In the composition API, we use the provide function to send data. It's imported from the view package and takes the key value pair we want to provide as first and second arguments. To receive data, we use the inject function. It's also imported from the view package and takes the provided key as an argument. As an example, we'll provide a username from our root app component, which also imports and uses the greeting message component. Then we'll inject the username into the greeting message component and output the value in the template. When we run the example in the browser, it'll show the username like we expect. With the options API, we define lifecycle hooks as options in the config object. While this is still a perfectly valid approach, Vue gives us lifecycle functions that we can invoke inside the setup option. We can translate a lifecycle hook to its function counterpart by prefixing it with on. The table in the written version of this lesson shows lifecycle hooks for both the options and composition APIs. 
Note that the before create and created lifecycle hooks aren't used because the setup option already runs before the component gets created. Any functionality we need at the component's creation can be done inside setup. Also note that lifecycle functions aren't available by default, we'll have to import the ones we need from the view package. Alright, that's it for the basics. In the next lesson, we'll learn how to perform asynchronous operations with the Composition API. Thank you for watching, we'll see you in the next one.